not want to make a mistake in this qualification race for this rolling start and here we come Merck on Merck as we head down for a rather murky start in terms of the weather too here we come it's been a good clean formation lap and we're racing at Macau what a beautiful sand and what a beautiful sight here at Macau Manuel dives into third place and attack to the wall for sure from one of the Mercedes and I think if I'm not mistaken, that wasn't Eduardo Mortara. Look at the Maro Engel now. Look, I said they'd be three wide, and they are. And here comes the number 18 BMW in third place. It was a super start by Augusto Farfus. Absolutely rocketed off the line. Looked to find a space. He found a space as well, up into fourth place. And uh, really challenging for third. He's got third already. And Maro Engel takes the lead as they go through this bar for the first time. Is anybody going to get caught out by the famous corner that is? Ooh, Rosenquist just misses the Lisboa corner there, but they're all safely through. Super stuff by the Brazilian in the 18th BMW Arts car. Mauro Engel leads up into sector two. Now this very, very tight. They're so wide, these cars. And uh, the, the walls and the barriers get oh so close. They never look quite as close as when you've got GT cars racing. And in a single line, they all go through. So a few little skirmishes, but uh, pretty much everyone seems to have got away with this. Eduardo Montara there in second place. Augusto Farfus in third. And Mauro Engel from the inside of the second row of the grid being the best of the starts. And it was Daniel Juncadella who definitely came together with the wall in the number 50 Mercedes. Uh, if we go back and have a look at the uh, replay, if they do show us that, as we go on board now, he definitely touched the outside wall of Reservoir Ben. Doesn't look as though there's major damage to the car, but we'll keep you informed as to whether... Oh, no! Oh, mayhem! And there's millions and millions and millions of dollars of damage here at the mighty Macau. And that is one of the worst GT accidents I've ever seen here. And in the place, the city that is a gamble, the lottery has absolutely come to an end. Right at the front of here is the 911. And you can see his frustration. Cars everywhere. Lucas de Grassi not even on the ground. Not on the tarmac. And not able to get out. Did anybody make it through? No hesitation in bringing out the red flag. The yes, they did. Look. Course completely blocked. My goodness. My goodness. What were you saying as we walked across the bridge? Everything had been relatively clean so far today. Mm -hmm. I should. I rest have said my it. valise. Goodness me! Four cars come through. Wow! Into pit lane. Now we don't know. Uh, <laughs> well, let's have a look at what happened first of all. We haven't seen what happened. Augusto Farfus in third place goes through, and it's the police that uh, they come together, and it's Junkadella who may well have been the cause because Junkadella now backwards, and and I think he had a damaged car anyway, but Junkadella is the car that's turned round. Uh, the um, Porsche of, is it, I'm trying to see who it was, I think it was Lauren Van Tour. It's, it's his Lauren Van Tour's Lauren Van Tour, yeah. there he is at yeah. the front, yeah, Lauren yeah. Van Tour came through and all the drivers are out and having a word, uh, but obviously nobody happy, Lucas de Grassi, um, in the middle of your picture there. Four cars have got through, only four cars. Well, yes, but... I am looking back at the 99 still of the Tom Blomquist. He's involved. So is the number five. Um, it just depends. The shot is not as clear. But I can tell you a concertina effect, given that you're coming down Moorish Hill into this right-hander, could mean that literally the whole field has been affected in some way or another. And I can also assure you that we've got a long wait for the resumption of this one, folks. But um, if you've just tuned in, and you've never seen the Macau Grand Prix. This is not bad driving. These are the very best drivers in the world. I can see that Re Felix Rosenquist is out of the car and yep. OK. Uh, my first thought is that everybody's OK. Lauren Van Tour taking a tour around his car. Uh, there's uh, one of the Audi drivers. And uh, yeah, this is uh, a real mess. But my, what I was going to say, and here comes the cranes. Um, so it won't take them too long to start to extricate them. But it just depends how further back how far down back the this field. goes yeah i don't think we're going to be able to get a camera angle that will show us the tail of the field so therefore we can start picking out and working out how many cars are okay so certainly we've got nico muller's car there hard up to the barrier on the left hand side of your screen
Nico Muller's uh, Audi. Now, start. it's a scene I've seen in Formula 3 many times, but never in GTs, not to this extent. No, we did say this, the very, very tight section of the uh, circuit and uh, GT cars get wider and wider, don't they, with every incarnation of a GT car. So um, the road completely blocked. So <sighs> I almost can't bear to watch this. I oh, know, it's, it's painful, isn't it? I'm sure the teams and the manufacturers can't bear to And there's the first Audi it. out of the way. That's that's the, uh, that's the um, that's the Honda. That's Excuse the me, NSX. that's the NSX Honda. Yeah. Now, Marcello is in the pits. And you know what? The other thing that's happening at the moment is it's getting darker and darker as if uh, rain clouds are looming in. They reckoned on the weather forecast. If we got a shower, a proper shower, it will be about 1 o'clock this afternoon. It's 25 to 1, everybody. Local time. So, Raphael Marcello talks to the AMG team. His first outing with this Mercedes crew at Macau in a GT car. And so far, he's equipped himself pretty well. But uh, now the tactics are going to go on because, amazingly, besides Junkadella, here's another look. So Farfus goes through and through a third. There's Junkadella, basically, I think, the cause of the accident, unless Lauren Van Tor was trying to go through on the yeah. inside, yeah, which is which is a no-no. And uh, it's only a There's guess. no room. It's only a guess look at as, this. as to what happened leading up to that. One, two, now, here's three, another thing four, that... Five, six... Million or just cars? Six cars, um, at the very least. We're trying to recover Lauren Van Tour's Porsche, which is very battered. Here's something they instituted last year into this race, uh, is these dollies. The uh, they dollies, work really yeah, well. They do. Uh, they literally just pick the front of the car up, put them on the dolly, and then <laughs> pull them away. Or on Ventura, of course, who won this race last year, albeit with a different manufacturer. Oh, here we go, on board. Oof, scary. And that, of course, is the number 11 of Lucas de Grassi, who's the one who ended up off the ground. Look, there he is, number 11. Now, four cars, that's all. There's Maro Engel, made it through. Most of the Mercedes. The other, Augusta Farfus. Could be a four-way race. Three Mercedes against a BMW. <laughs> yeah, what a peculiar situation. I think I think you're right. I think there are going to be plenty more yeah. cars that are unscathed. I mean, I, looking down, to, I would argue that if if the other guys were smart enough to get off the brakes or get on the brakes early enough, uh, Rosenquist was definitely involved in the incident because he was out of the car pretty quick. That's 11th place. But we could see the likes of Marco Whitman, Bertolotti. Um, uh, but uh, Dumas, a young uh, Robin Frins. Um, I say that Poten tentatively. Potentially, potentially this, okay. Th this, yeah. could, this, this could be absolutely brilliant for Robin. Yes, it could. He needs a recovery. It was a tall mountain to climb from uh, the penultimate row of the grid. But with, obviously, he wouldn't want it this way, but with a number of cars not able to take any kind of restart, then a number of places can be made up very, very swiftly. Good news, if there is that, if there any is any good news from this, as they take uh, Jugadella's car out of the way. So let's have a look at. Uh, well, I'd like to see how Lauren Van Tor approached this uh, corner now. If you go on board with Lauren Van Tor down the hill, the next is the right hander, and you can see Mercedes of Jugadella is in front of him. Okay, oh. he was unsighted, to be fair. I'm not putting any blame on him. Uh, Jungadella had already hit police spend by the time that Lauren Van Tor came across him. Uh, and so no blame apportioned, I'm afraid, if I'm going to put any blame in right now, and I don't want to. Uh, <laughs> Um, let's, I, not. <laughs> let's, let's not. Let's not. Let's talk about the recovery some more, shall yeah, we? Yeah, we shall. But I'm, I'm not going to blame the 911. No. I'll say that, shall and, I? And, uh, absolutely. And, and very good to have the onboard shot. So uh, we found out what happened leading up to what can only be described as a very upsetting scene. Uh, because uh, now forklifts, cranes, flatbed recovery vehicles, it's all hands to the pump now to get the road clear. Imagine if you were a race fan and you'd never been to Macau and you were sort of saying, well, what's all the fuss about? Why do people get so excited about it? And then you witness that, you're like, <laughs> oh, I get it now. <laughs> it is interesting. And following such a, a clean and untroubled race for the Formula 3 cars, this was... Um, Mayhem. Yeah, unpredictable, really. Uh, 
I did wonder if we might be... Um... So, here we go. Here's a look down the pit lane at those not involved. One is Maro Engel. That's the safety car, in fact. Uh, the driver of the FIA safety car for the WTCC. So, uh, he's actually not the driver of the car we're looking at. But that car we are looking at right here is Maro Engel's car. And he's okay. And you can see, not... Uh, a drop of problems for him and got a very good start and interestingly people putting hoods on and umbrellas up we it's have rain folks it's really dark really really dark and, uh, and the winds just got up so I've got a feeling it is raining what could possibly go wrong <laughs> yes uh, as you can see the number 48 car is fire and clean as a whistle Eduardo Mortara is okay and Augusto Farfus is A-OK. -okay. This is the next car you will see. Number 18, the Schnitzer BMW. And Charlie Lamb and the boys. So Farfus in and with a great chance of uh, perhaps uh, making it. He made a really good start, did Augusto. And uh, yeah, we'll see a few drops on the camera now. There's Charlie Lamb chatting away down. There's Callum Eilock. Maybe he fancies his chances. <laughs> <laughs> He's asking him what the fuss is all about. <laughs> And there is one Group oh, M car. Do you think he's coming through to gloat? It probably, so, yeah, yes. We didn't have a red flag. Yeah, it's your problem. Uh, we saw Raphael already out of the car, but that's his car. So we literally have four unscathed cars in the pit lane. I, I, I've never seen anything like this uh, in all my years. Uh, we're looking at Chas Mostert's car being dragged back. The uh, fourth of the BMWs. And I've just seen spots of rain on the, uh, on the camera lens as well. Let's have a look at some of the sort of highlights of that crash. And it's, you can see Juncadella gets turned around, Van Tours in it, uh, several Audis, Lucas de Grassi's put into the sky because of it. Uh, the number 99, Tom Blomquist, is stuck underneath. Here we go on board behind the 27. And a nasty, nasty picture for Lucas de Grassi. That was really not a pleasant sight. Luckily, not one of the fastest corners. There's Juncadella already in the wall and I think he was pretty close to Maro Engel that might have been the problem it looks as though the VLT Porsche of Darrell